Hi. Today we're going to be using leveraging the LucidWorks Fusion platform to build an end-to-end -end solution for users looking to search different various Pokemon. Um, to start, we're going to go in and create an app, which I've done already, um, called Pokédex. What this does is in Fusion, it creates all of the back-end components and front-end components for a self-contained app for, you, for your use case. Coming into my admin area, um, the first step we do is we're going to work on getting our data in. So we will come over and come into the index workbench, which will allow us to load data and transform it into a format that we like. So we're going to come in here. And ingest some data. And what you can see here is now we have a representation of what one of our documents would look like. Um, as you can see, everything looks good. Uh, we have a lot of different data to work with. Um, so no, no real customizations are, real, are needed at this time. So now that we think that everything is good, we're going to go ahead and save. And then we're going to start our indexing. So now we're putting the data into the LucidWorks Fusion platform. What it's doing right now is it's running through this pipeline and checking, bringing the data in one by one. Um, this is a very quick process um, given it's a very small data set. To check that if the data set has been loaded properly, we can come into the data source configuration and look and see that it was successfully run. Now that our back end is ready, it's now time to build the front end. From the Fusion UI, we're going to go in and click on the Build New UI button, which is going to take us into the App Studio wizard. Here in this wizard, we're going to be able to build our initial, our base configuration for our simple user interface. The first step is to set our query source, which is our query profile, which is connected to our Pokemon data. So we will click Next. Now, App Studio is analyzing and going to start giving us suggestions on what we want to use for our basic UI components. Well, the analysis is complete, we'll click Next. First thing we do is select a title. For this we will use name underscore s and a target URL um, for the time being we're going to use an image which when the user clicks on the title they will be taken to this image of this Pokemon. Next, we will set a description. Um, for our data set, we're going to use the number, as that is actually a very relevant piece of information when dealing with Pokemon in a Pokédex. As well as facets. Facets are important as they are the left-hand side that will enable you to filter based on different criteria. So the first facet we're going to choose is the type underscore SS. As you can see from the example of what it will look like, um, it will be a list of different types of Pokemon. Um, because this list is so long, we're going to actually enable search within Facet so that I can start typing letters and it will actually show me recommendations of the Facet that I should choose. We're going to also give it a friendly name. The other Facet we're going to use is Weaknesses. Um, and we're going to apply the same techniques. for these two facets. Great. Now let's click Next. And finally, we're going to name our, fat, our, our app and select a color. Let's select. Now App Studio in the back end is preparing your development environment and get, deploying your app into a development area. Now, as you can see, our app has been rendered and the preview has been displayed. 
As you can see, our cards are very basic with just a title and a number, as well as our facets on the left-hand side and our search box on the top. The next things we want to do to complete this UI are add some type ahead, as well as make our cards look a little bit better so our users could see a picture of what each Pokemon would look like. Let's start with type ahead. We're going to go into our in-browser code editor and come into our partials pages, which has a page dedicated for the top header or the search box. Within the apps, the HTML pages, we have our commented out App Studio markup, which will actually allow us to instantaneously create our type ahead. By uncommenting this section and giving it the proper field name we would like to, to display, our type ahead will now be able to, as users type in the search box, start suggesting items or Pokemon in our case. So if we come back into search HTML and let our preview load, and I start typing Charmander, you will see that the Charmander family is now within my type head. Awesome. The last thing we want to do is we want to make these cards look a little bit better for the end user. So bringing back my in-browser code editor, I'm going to navigate down to my search results, which is this markup right here. This, little, this markup right here represents all of the search results in our app. Uh, I'm going to come over here and grab a snippet, which has been predefined from our documentation, around adding images and some other minor styling. I'm going to come in here, add some space, comment this out. One of the beauties of this in-app editor is its ability to format and make things look nice. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to click Save. As you can see, my preview is refreshing. And now, if I look, I can see my Pokemon have, my cards have nice Pokemon images as well as a nicer way of displaying the title, the name of the Pokemon as well as its number. So let's exit out of our editor and just test everything really quickly. Let's come into our type and start typing in grass. As you can see, grass filter, perfect. As well, now let's go into weakness and type in ice. Now that we're happy with our UI, it's time to publish. So coming up here into the right-hand corner, we're going to click on the Publish button and publish the app to a URL so other users can consume it and search for Pokemon. Now that my app has been published, I'm able to go in, I'm going to go back into the admin console of Fusion, and we're going to go and hit that end user endpoint. So I'm going to come in here and click View Published UI. And as you can see here, we've now hit our end UI. Um, if we come in and start typing in Charmander, you will see with our type ahead. Um, and as we search on Charmander, you will have the Charmander family. Um, we also have the ability to filter down on weaknesses. So if we start typing in ground, it will show and we can click as well. And if we click on the Charmander, it actually sends us to an image of the Charmander. This is just the basics of what an App Studio app could produce. Um, from here, you can add many different things, um, but this is how quick and easy it is to get yourself started and to a fully functioning user interface within a few minutes. Thanks, and I hope you have a great afternoon.